Hey there! As usual, it's Paul from The Smart Money Investor. I'm a German student and I want to help you to understand the different ways of investing money, especially focusing the long term. The last videos I've been talking about compound interest, researching tools and how stocks work. And especially for people new to the investment topic, I think it makes most sense to continue with the explaining ETFs next. And maybe saying a few words about hedged funds. So let's jump right into it. A hedged fund, like most of you can probably imagine without doing research on it, is usually hedged by a few persons up to whole companies like for example BlackRock, JP Morgan Assets and Bridgewater Associates. They analyze the market and pick stocks or other assets of which they expect outstanding growth for the next time, lump them together and call it their fund. And because they put so much effort into it, they usually charge you twice. The first time when you're doing the transaction, this fee is called issue surcharge and is mostly ranged between 1 and 3% of your order value, but depending on the fund size and the assets it's invested in, it can get even higher. The second fee is charged on an annual basis. It's called TER, standing for total expense ratio and varying between 1 and 2.5% of the value that you have invested in the fund. ETFs, exchange traded funds, are, as the name suggests, also a kind of fund. But as funds are mostly listed at the managing company with the stock market as an intermediary, ETFs can be traded right at the stock market. Furthermore, they are passively managed. That means that the fund manager does not pick stocks according to his judgment and adjustments are made by an algorithm. It is for this reason that the costs are way lower. We are talking 0.1 to 0.6% TER and in some cases not even issue surcharges. This leads us to the next point. What assets are ETFs invested in? Well, the goal of ETFs is to replicate indexes as exact as possible. For those of you that don't know what an index is, an index is an instrument to measure the performance of a section of the stock market. Therefore, underlying different criteria, stocks are picked that then together build the index. Criteria would be, for example, market capitalization, geography or the sector the firms make their money in, like technology, chemistry, aerospace and so on. You could say it's a tool used by investors and financial managers to describe the market and to compare the return on specific investments. Today there are two different methods to replicate markets, whereas the easier one to understand is probably the physical replication. Therefore, the offering company buys shares of firms belonging to the index intended to replicate. Then, they distribute own shares again to make the index accessible for investors, but also to gain capital which they, on the other way around, then invest again. And as long as the ETF consists of big companies, with many shares issued, of which it's easy to buy in high quantities, physical replication is the way to go. The German DAX, for example, consists of only 30 companies, all providing a great liquidity in shares. But as soon as the index comprises a bigger amount of firms, like a few hundred or even more than a thousand, chances are it's getting problematic to manage the weighting of the shares amongst each other without paying too many fees or having a big tracking error. It could also be that the index contains companies with a bad liquidity. Tracking error is the deviation between index and ETF performance. Especially the last points are reasons why financial institutions invented a second replication method. Synthetically replicated ETFs Sounds difficult, and it actually is. Synthetic replication is achieved by so-called swaps. And as you can probably think of, for a swap it always needs two parties, which in this case are the ETF provider and a financial institution. They often belong to the same parent company, like for example JP Morgan in the role of the financial institution or bank and JP Morgan Assets as the ETF provider. But what do they swap? Let's say the assets provider offers a world ETF that represents the performance of 2,500 companies worldwide. Because of the difficulties mentioned before, they wouldn't go ahead and buy shares of all of them. They would build a representative portfolio of alike performing bigger companies and negotiate a so-called swap contract with a bank. In this contract, the bank tracks the index intended to be replicated and assures the provider to pay for any deviation to the representative portfolio. In fact, they oblige themselves to pay each other the return of their portfolios or indexes. Let's take a look at a concrete fictional example. Both assets are worth $100. When the world index now gains 
but the provider's portfolio only grows by 3, the bank compensates the provider. To balance the difference of the performance, the provider pays $3 and the bank pays 5. On the other way around, when the provider's portfolio does better than the index, they have to pay the bank. Like this, the investors of the ETF do almost have the exact return of the replicated index. What leaves us with at least one more important question. When do they make these swaps? Brokers and their related swap contractors are regulated by law to never surpass a deviation of 10%. It's up to them when they want to compensate differences, but in general they pay each other way before reaching the limit. Let's take a look on a synthetically replicated ETF so that you can see what the portfolio of such an asset can look like. For that, I'll use just ETF. When it comes to search criteria, I tick the boxes swap based for the replication method and MSCI for the index family. And because we were using a worldwide index in our example before, I choose the All Country World Index by Luxor. As you can see in the description above, they say the index to replicate the performance of companies spread all over 49 different countries through swap contracts. Scrolling down a little, we can see how it performed so far, and in my case, as I'm from Germany, even which brokers let me trade it and how much they charge me. At the Documents section, right under the Offers section, you can click on the Annual Report, which should contain balance sheets and transaction documents of several Lixa ETFs. And here we go. At page 528 and following, we might find what we came for. What first catches my view is that the ETF is only physically invested in 11 countries, not 49. Also I see, and that's as well a bit atypical, that this portfolio contains a lot of automobility and a position of even more than 9% in Airbus shares, what's quite a lot for a single position contained by a fund respectively. Usually you would see a lot of Apple, Microsoft and Amazon shares at this place. But this is what differs a swap ETF of a physically replicated ETF. ETFs make it possible for anyone, at any budget, to invest diversified in firms and indexes worldwide. The great thing with that is that you don't have to speculate on the growth of specific firms. If a few companies do bad for some reasons, others that don't relate to them can do good and like so reduce the volatility of your investment. You can go with physical replication, at which the fund creator is actually invested in the firms, or you can buy swap replicated funds that contain shares as well, but not necessarily of the companies that the index has listed. ETFs usually copy existing indexes with a low tracking error and are not hedged actively. For this reason, the fees are way, way lower compared to hedged funds. And keeping in mind that 95% of all fund managers fail on outperforming their index, this sounds like a pretty good deal. This should have covered all the basics around ETFs and I hope that I've helped you out and answered the questions you came for. If not, feel free to put your questions in the comment section, because if you have one, you're probably not the only one with it and I'll try to reply as soon as possible. That said, thank you for watching, I'd appreciate if you supported my channel and see you in the next video.